Hi there, welcome to class. My name is Benin and I'm an English teacher from the UK. Today I'd like to dive into a little bit of grammar together and give you some options that you can use to talk about probability in the future. Um, so we often tend to rely on phrases like will probably, I think this will probably happen, I think that will probably happen. So the idea today is to challenge you with some other kind of structures that we can use to talk about probability in the future. So let's start off with the expression uh, to be bound to. To be bound to. This is a lovely expression to talk about something that we are sure will happen in the future. So let me give you some examples. We could say, don't worry about the interview, you're bound to get the job. You're bound to get the job which means I'm sure that you're going to get the job. It's super likely. This is what it means. Or you could say, you know, I'm really excited about the football match. My team are bound to win and it's going to be a great uh, day to celebrate together. So bound to. And we can see that we use bound to followed by verb or infinitive. We could say bound to win, bound to get, bound to do. This is how we would use the structure. Okay, what about structures for when we're pretty sure, but not totally, um, but something's quite likely? Well, some structures we could use here, rather than just saying will probably, would be things like chances are, more likely than not, or in all likelihood. And all of these ones go at the beginning of a sentence, followed by a comma and then a full clause. So subject plus verb, like a full idea, we can say. Let me give you some examples. So let's say this time we're talking about politics, for example, in a conversation, and we want to give our views on which party we think will win. We could say like, chances are party A will win the elections. Chances are party A will win the elections. Maybe the other person says, no, in, in all likelihood, I think party B will win the elections. In all likelihood, I think party B will win the elections. Or more likely than not, I think that party C will actually get a, a greater share of the votes than last year. So that's how we would use all of them with the full clause after the structure. And the final structure we can use, which works in a slightly different way, is may well or could well. I love this one personally. I think it's a really, really elegant phrase. Um, so this works a little bit differently than the others in that it needs to go between the subject and the verb. So let's say we are talking about the future of a particular company. We could say, you know, the company hasn't been doing so well, but I think they may well increase their profits this year. So we've got they, subject, may well in the middle, increase the verb there, so it slots in the middle. Or we could say, um, you know, it's, it's sad, but given the economic situation, I think they could well fire uh, a, a large percentage of people this year. So they, subject, could well in the middle, fire, okay? And this may well, could well means again that, that we're pretty sure it's not 100%, it's not like they're bound to fire, um, but pretty likely. Okay, so those are our phrases for different levels of certainty. If we're super certain, we can say something is bound to happen. If we're kind of pretty sure, we could say things like chances are, in all likelihood, more likely than not, or may well and could well. I hope that these um, expressions help you broaden um, your grammar range a little bit when you're speaking English. If you'd like to have a chance to practice, feel free to write me a sentence about what you think will happen for the future of your country or your job or any particular field that you're interested in and I'll have a look at your sentences. Um, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.